Hi everybody, old guy here. Well, I'm back from uh, visiting my family. But in a bit, I'm going to be heading out to do some other family things. Uh, so, videos are going to be sporadic over the next two, three weeks, maybe a month, depending upon what happens. In the meantime, while I was out running around, uh, I came across this, which is, let me get to a title page here, The Short Reign of Pippin IV by John Steinbeck. Yeah, Steinbeck. Um, nice little book, printed in 1957. It's uh, actually got some uh, illustrations in it, like this, if I can get this at the proper location, there. Which, you know, you don't see in uh, books too much anymore, which is a shame. It's kind of a nice art to have. But, uh, I had never heard of this. I did not know that this was one of John Steinbeck's books. Apparently not a lot of other people did either. I guess that he was in some uh, sardonic, amused mood and the idea came to him because this is amusing in the sense that a Brit critic uses the word. You know, not hilarious, uh, somewhat south of droll, but funny nonetheless. Which isn't typical Steinbeck. Um, Grapes of Wrath and East of Eden aren't exactly yuck fests, although there are some funny moments in them. Um, of a sort, within the context of the overall nightmare, but this one was written to be funny. As a satire, Steinbeck having some fun. I'd compare it to Travels with Charlie, but I haven't read that, so I don't know if they compare at all. So what is this thing about? Well, Pepin Henstall is a mi nice middle-aged man uh, living with his wife and impossible daughter in 1957 Paris. He is an amateur astronomer who has, who, who has a comet named after him. He actually shares the name with a Japanese astronomer uh, because they both spotted it on pretty much the same evening, Haristal from the roof of his apartment building. He is also descended from Charlemagne through some dubious tracings of lineage. He has an uncle named Charles Martel who is, yes, descended from Charles Martel, and who makes a living by finding and selling dubious antiquities. Overall, Pippin lives a relaxed, uncomplicated Parisian life until the communists show up. Ain't that the way it is? In this case, the uh, French government falls. What else is new? and the various political parties get together to decide what's next. And what a group! You've got the conservative radicals, the radical conservatives, the royalists, Christian atheists, atheist Christians, Christian communists, proto-communists, ad infinitum, ad nauseum. Remember, this is 1957, and Steinbeck is already having fun with all the factions in the world. So amid all the bickering and impasse, uh, the communists, of which there are four other groups, realize they can create a new French Revolution if they restore the monarchy. So they team up with the royalists and garner enough votes to do just that. Researching the records, they realize Haristal is the last living member of true royalty. So they show up at his apartment, drag him off to Versailles, crown in hand.
Now, of course, this is all very silly, and there is a danger that it will fall into farce, and yes, there are many farcical elements, especially during the coronation. But it stays on this side of outrageousness and has some genuinely funny moments. Um, Steinbeck has a real gift for uh, subtle humor, dropping little gems when you least expect it. Like in uh, this description of Haristal's concierge, who, after years of living in Paris, still refused to believe in it. Little grenades like that keep you reading. The story? Well, of course there's going to be a revolution. This is France. And, of course, Pippin's behavior triggers it. But not in the way you imagine, and nothing comes out the way anyone expected. Come on, it's France. And you can just see Steinbeck sitting there shaking his head from time to time, an amused grin on his face as he wrote this. Little did he know it wasn't satire, but prediction of just about every country's political process these days. I guess he's sort of like a good-natured Orwell. Old guy here. See you later.